Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC, we do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a fan cooling unit. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. Today we have a service call for a fan call unit. I got a call saying that this motor is bad and needs to be replaced. The engineer mentioned the motor is right here. I did not purchase it. Definitely gonna have to match that up. Hopefully it's the right one. Hopefully you guys can excuse the noise in here. We got two chillers. These are two absorbers that provide heating and cooling. So I just matched up the model number with this motor here. It's the exact same motor. This is a single phase motor. I never troubleshooted this unit. And over here is a capacitor. Typically, the capacitor goes bad before the motor does. Let's see if this shaft, nope, fully is still moving. If this would be locked up, definitely this needs to be changed, but that's the first step that I would take. And since I never checked this personally, I would wanna make sure that the motor is actually bad before actually replacing it. Let's see what they got over there. They got an ancient thermostat. Look at that build up on the batteries. That, that could be an issue right there. Let's open up this panel right here. This got to gotta be the controls. Let's see what's going on. It's a fan coil unit. It's chilled water. Let's see what's going on over here before we start ripping this all apart. Go ahead, take out the cover. I right, pull it up. Let's see what we got going on over here. Got a transformer. Got our on and off switch. Got a relay. And a low voltage terminal block. Let's take a quick look over here to see what's even going on. Let's turn this on. Power's now on. Look at that, this thermostat doesn't even work. Does it have a common? It does. There's a common here. So even though those batteries could possibly be bad, there's a common here. Let's find the problem. So let's see, voltage. Between R and C, we should have 24 volts. What we got? Oh, look at that. Good old nothing. Like I said, even though the batteries are bad, since there's a common, that means this should still get power. So right here, this is our incoming power. And there's nothing. Where's the power coming in the bottom here? Do we have power? We see nothing. No power. Our breaker must be off. I literally traced the lines. There's a breaker right here. You can see it's on the off position. You guys gotta really learn how to use that meter. So let's go ahead and let's turn that on and see what's going on. All right, now we're in the off position and we got power to our thermostat. So we know our transformer's good because uh, we wouldn't have a display on here. Oh man, this thing is super loose. All right, let's put the fan on on. I got the meter across the wires for, well, one of the wires for the motor. Let's put the fan on on. Whoa. What was that? Oh man. Oh wow. This thing literally just went off. This display is gone. Something just killed all of the power. Yep. No power coming in. We tripped the breaker. Alright, so considering no more power is coming back in, we definitely tripped the breaker. So power's off. Just wanna see something real quick. This is the two wires going to the motor. The third wire is ground. Typically when you do an insulation test on a motor, you're gonna wanna check 
the terminals at the motor itself and not the wires because there could be a short in the wires but it's a good chance that motor's bad we tripped that breaker so what i do is i put one one leg on the casing of the motor and then we check each wire going to it so it is going to be the first one nothing's going to short out now let's pay attention to this right here and see where we go oh right there literally we're below 30 mega ohms and it's indicating that it's bad turn off the light for a second chris just pay attention and once you press the uh, button you're gonna see it says right away and you just watch the light bad guys it doesn't get easier than that come on is it good is it bad well i'll tell you this motor is done so whoever troubleshooted this was correct that motor got to be changed i just wanted to make sure before anything so yeah i just need to do a little brainstorming to how would be the best way to pull this thing is they put this controls here if you ever got to change this you can't pull it out look what they got over here mm, the only wires really i mean you could pull this whole panel off but why would you need to pull the whole panel off you know it's a change like uh, uh the, the squirrel cage or it's just a mess and then look at this that's not good yeah here's the actuator i was wondering where is that thing so that's the actuator for the water and then look at this drain come on what is that and look where it's draining to look at this water in there there's water in there because this actuator must be just like propped open how is it why is it why is this chilled it's a problem here oh i see it oh it's not bypassed this thing is stuck open come on some there's a lot of things wrong here and this thing is ancient we're gonna rebuild this thing nicely but let's just get it working because i need to get approval for those things let's figure out what's the best way to move this and change this i just you gotta get everything lined up properly. There's quite a few ways to take this out, but I think for me, the best thing would be take out these two screws on the side, that one screw in the back, do that on both sides. Maybe uh, in the one screw here and the opposite end and from there, we could slide this whole thing out. I ended up taking out this and pretty much all i had to do was disconnect this wires and the two wires for the actuator i just cut it let's get this thing out of the way when i took out the screws over here this whole thing came down a bit my mistake but at this point let's just pull this whole thing out so at least we're free to, to work now and you know things happen let's just uh, do the best we can all right we got this thing out that motor was really, really weighing me down. I couldn't get it back up there. I'm gonna take it apart and put the squirrel cage back up there and work on the motor separately. All right, we finally got that bracket on. That was the problem. So that's back. But look over here. If you looked, our, uh, our stock came off the shaft. So this whole thing is loose. Something looks broken in here as well. Oh, you hear that? Something got destroyed here. I can see some metal pieces sticking out. And this is not, you see it's, it's not on there. I'll take a picture so you guys can see. It's gonna be too hard to put everything back in one shot. What I'm gonna wanna do is just separate this motor, then hang this up, and then in the process, just put it back the same way. So I'm just gonna take off these two bolts on the bottom these two screws and this whole thing is going to come out let's hook it up all right it's free let's put this back i'm just going to start transferring the new motor to the new base but at the same time got to get rid of this pulley and as far as this we hung this back up I want this thing back in place and we're just gonna work like this 
should have started like this, but it is what it is. And we'll continue. So I took a marker and marked the base plate. And what I want to do is take off these four bolts, two here and two here, and uh, take this off and mount our new motor. And then what I want to do is actually pull this uh, pulley. And I don't think I'm going to be able to use it. It looks damaged back here. But I want to take it with me to the supply shop so I can get, what is that? <laughs> so I can get a new one so we don't have any issues in the future. And I don't got to carry the whole motor with me. So I'm going to end up pulling this thing. So let's begin. It's going to take like a little adjustable. And take off the four nuts and let's transfer things over. It's actually two little brackets it sits on. So I have them facing the same way. And I want to make sure I put everything back the same way so I can mark it. So let's match that up and just put the bolts back. There's one Allen key here. And I take that, loosen it up. Might as well. Can actually adjust this and then there's another allen key in the back so we're gonna take that use this for some leverage whoa get my knee on there let's let's try this again Man, this Allen key is bent. That thing ain't coming out. Just wanted to get a, the right pulley. Might have just have to bring the whole thing. All right, picked up a new pulley. And a new belt. Before I install that, what I wanna do is pre-wire the motor. So we spent the least amount of time inside that little space. Everything is now pre-wired, safe with the connector. If you're unsure of how to wire it, there's always a wiring diagram on the motor, or if it's an exact replacement, just go wire for wire and put everything back in the same place. Before you put any pulley on, you wanna sand down the shaft. I'm doing as much work as I can outside of the space, just so it's easier. So, to get this sanded down, then we're going to mount the motor, then we're going to mount the pulley, make sure it's straight, and then lock it down. So I put the flat stock in the little crevice there, and you're going to match it up as well. But before you put it in, make sure these screws are not going to be in your way. So I kind of just back them out just a little bit, make sure they don't come out. And then what I would do is just get it started and just slide it on and then we'll make the final adjustment out there. So it's time to mount the motor. I'm gonna lift it in place and bring the screw in, all right? Go. All right, come on the other side. There you go. So now it's holding for the most part. Now we just gotta Put our nuts and bolts here, and we should be lined up. Cool. All right, so we got the motor secured. Had it matched up the way it was before. You can see the marker, everything is lined up. Same thing with the washers and all that. So from here, let's try to put the belt on and try to get this as straight as possible. And then we'll tighten down our set screws, which one is here. And the other one is here. So this I had to adjust completely different. So we actually get this thing straight. This seems pretty straight, got a decent tension. So now let's lock down the two screws, wire this up. I pulled this out because I really needed to get a better visual and it's just easier to work. So tighten down the screws with the Allen key wire it back to the same way it was 
Let's flip the power on and see what happens and hopefully this thing doesn't blow up. <laughs> All right, everything's ready to go. Mounted everything back, wired the motor, put all this stuff back. That definitely needs to be changed. Who knows if that actuator even works. I'm ready to turn the breaker back on and test. Just turn the breaker back on. Got a display on the thermostat and let's put the fan on, on. gotta make sure the system is cooling but this was the job awesome put the cover back on definitely got to change that filter I took a peek at it. it's filthy got 69.6 .6, but that's because the chiller is actually off and as far as over here if we take a close look this thing is just like wide open but it's not doing anything if you follow this is the bypass and it's open so it's pretty much open water all the time that's why earlier we had condensation we had some water here some condensation because this thing is just always on basically the water the water is always flowing so that's that one thing i would like to do is because this thing is so ancient it's probably changed the thermostat i got two of them here dusty already so i don't know i might go with one of these digital thermostats <laughs> just because i got like ocd and i want everything to look nice but it does work so yeah that's pretty much it we're gonna end the video here if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week don't forget to share this with your friends and colleagues i'll catch you all next time